Okay, so we've seen that Pascal's triangle are also the combinations. And then when we've been expanding, we've noticed this pattern. Now this pattern, when I show it to you like this, looks very scary looking. Okay? Scary. Ah. Right? It looks scary. But let's think about what does this say. If I do x plus y to the n, and right underneath here we'll do x plus y to the, pick a number, 4. Okay? These numbers in front, which I'm going to underline all of them in green, those just come from Pascal's triangle. So for x plus y to the 4, you're going to have five terms. And if you go to, to your triangle where you have five terms, you're going to have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And that matches up with 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, 4 choose 4. Of course, when they're trying to write this generally with n's, it gets a little bit messy. But can you see that whatever it is, choose 0, choose 1, choose 2, choose 3, until you get down to choosing all of them. That's what's underlined in green. Then the next thing that we're going to notice, and I'm going to do this in black, is you start with x to the n, so in this case you'd have x to the 4, and then what do you notice with your powers? They go down by 1 each time. And they have that here, x to the n, x to the n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, until finally you have one left there and none in the last one. The next pattern that you noticed was what happens with the second term in your binomial, in this case the y. I'm going to do that in blue. The first one doesn't have any. The second one has 1. Then you have 2. Then you have 3. And you finally end with 4. We add all the way along in between. And that's what they're saying here. You start with 0, go up until you get to y to the n. This pattern always happens. This is the way to write it generally, but you'll never be asked to replicate that formula. Just need to see the idea. Yes? What is y plus x would just mean that you have the y first here and the x at the end. And, and really, since we're adding these things, we could jumble up these terms in the end anyways, right? Because whether I put this y to the 4 at the end or the x to the 4 at the beginning, doesn't make a difference. But this is our way of organizing it nicely for our pattern to happen. So now we go to example number two, and even when there's other numbers in here, we use this pattern. I'm going to try to use the same colors that we did before. So the fact that this is a three means that there's going to be four terms in Pascal's triangle. That's going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. So when we're expanding this, it's going to equal 1, and I'll spread this out, 3, 3, 1. Now your first term, which I'll underline in black, that means you would have 4a squared to the 3, then 4a squared to the 2, then 4a squared to the 1, and then you would have none in the last one. And your second term, in this case, which is 2b, which I'll underline in blue, means you would start with none of them, then you would have 1, 2b here, 2b squared there, and 2b cubed there. Of course, these are all added up together. And this would be the first step if you were expanding it completely using Pascal's triangle. Step two just means we need to simplify things. 4 cubed is 64. a squared cubed, a to the 6, plus 4 squared is 16, times 2 is 32, times 3 is 96. a squared squared becomes a to the 4 with 1b. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, times 3 is 48. a squared 
b squared. And finally, 2 cubed is 8, b cubed. And so this is the final simplified version of this one. Question you can do for practice is number 7.